Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this um, international network event on uh, bio waste management. There's still people uh, logging in, so I'll uh, have a few more minutes um, before we start the first presentations. But in the meantime, please uh, allow us to uh, record this and um, agree with uh, the fact that we stream uh, this uh, meeting on, uh, on uh, Facebook. Follow the instructions as you see here on your screen. Please keep your microphone muted. Um, say got it if you agree that uh, we stream this and uh, we show your pictures on the, on the screen. And then in a few more minutes, we'll uh, open the first sessions. I'll give it another minute before we open up because we have uh, 51 participants now uh, joining us, but there's still people coming in. So I'll give it another minute and then we'll ask the first speaker to enter the stage. So again, uh, welcome to everybody in this uh, international uh, networking event um, on uh, biomass uh, waste management. We have about uh, 51 people participating at this moment. There are still people coming in from uh, all over Europe. <clears throat> welcome again to everybody. Um, I repeat that uh, this will be streamed on, on Facebook. And there will be a possibility to uh, follow this in, uh, in, uh, through the Latvian channel. If you want to go to the Latvian channel, please go to the lower side of your screen. You see participants, chat, share screen, record and interpretation. Please click on interpretation and then you will see you can go to the Latvian channel and there will be a Latvian simultaneous translation. Um, following the, the presentation of uh, what you see on the screen. Just go to interpretation, click on interpretation, and then follow the Latvian, the Latvian channel. It's now uh, <clears throat> time to uh, ask the first presentation, Professor uh, Dr. Daniel Pleissner from uh, Lüneburg University in Germany. Please, Daniel, are you ready to uh, Give us your uh, presentation. There we are. The screen is yours. Um, as you have you we discussed before, uh, we only have a short time, so take about fifteen or seventeen minutes. Around that time, I will get starting getting nervous, and I'll uh, I'll uh, inform you that the time is near, and then we'll have about ten minutes for discussions and further questions. But please, uh, please go ahead and start your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, Franz. Um, I will keep it very condensed. Uh, I think the discussion is uh, very important today. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to talk today. Actually, I have two presentations. Um, the first one is about uh, bio waste management and utilization, future perspectives and challenges. And the second one is uh, about yeah, what I think might be inno innovative uh, uh, waste management um, processes. Um, when I started uh, yeah, 10 years ago in the topic of bio waste management, I yeah, faced a couple of problems. And um, for those of us who are biologists or, or chemists, or uh, biotechnologists or environmental engineers and um, who are working in the field of bioeconomy. Actually, we, we, we don't see a material as waste and actually we don't see a material as a byproduct. For us, the only interesting thing is, can we use the material for our processes, for our purposes? And this is something I had to learn in the yeah, recent years because there is a tension between waste management and uh, bioeconomy. Actually, this 
comes from the uh, 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 from the differences in the disciplines and the education. Uh, and uh, it is also my mission so far to connect both areas, waste management and bioeconomy, and to make best, uh, make the most of uh, both worlds out of it. Um, we all know this uh, graphic, it's from the European Waste Framework Directive, uh, it's the waste hierarchy, where we first, uh, of course, have to focus on the prevention of waste. Uh, whenever we can prevent waste, we have to prevent waste. If we cannot prevent, then we have to prepare for reuse, or if this is not possible, we have to recycle, recover. At the end, if nothing else can be done, we have to dispose our waste material. And this actually is this graphic fits very well to the inorganic uh, uh, yeah, material stream. But when we look at the organic material waste streams, this is uh, uh, yeah, barely working. Of course, there are exceptions. It works for, for, for paper where we have a very good uh, collection and, and, and reuse and recycling uh, uh, system. It also works for uh, plastics. If we can uh, collect it in a, in a separate area, and we can collect uh, the uh, materials separately, and then we can make use of it in a good way. But if we think about the organic garbage bin, then we have uh, uh, problems and how can we reuse our organic waste? How can we recycle the organic waste material? But we should, we should find ways of recycling of organic material because for me, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, all the proteins, all the uh, carbohydrates, uh, the amino acids, the sugars, the fatty acids and lipids and, and whatever can be inside uh, uh, organic waste. Those are secondary raw materials which can find an application in uh, um, yeah, utilization processes which go beyond the state of the art. But first of all, uh, to bring all of us uh, on the same level, I would like to uh, focus on the definitions we have from the uh, Waste Framework Directive. This is very important and it should be clear also for the discussion afterwards. So when is something a waste? When is something a bio-waste? And when is something a byproduct? Uh, just a short uh, uh, yeah, uh, story is so why it is important for me to tell you about the definitions. Uh, it was uh, seven, seven years ago when I participated um, in a seminar where uh, a couple of people talked about utilization of food waste. And uh, I have been working on this topic for a couple of years now, and I, I have some processes available which we can apply for the utilization of food waste. But uh, during the seminar, uh, there was one uh, uh, lawyer from Italy. So she uh, presented um, what can be done with waste and what can be done with byproducts. So whenever we have a byproduct, we are basically open to many, many utilization processes. When it comes to waste, we are limited to uh, just a few utilization processes. And then I asked a very, yeah, naive question actually. And then if it is such a problem to utilize, utilize waste, then why should we call something waste? Why don't we call something a byproduct? And then she got very angry because it was a really naive question. And she told me, well, that is a very clear definition when is something a waste and when is something a byproduct. And we have to be clear that we cannot do everything with waste, but we can many, many things as byproducts. So this is uh, why I'm introducing the definitions uh, uh, to you today. So what is waste? So waste means actually any substance or object which the holder discards or intends or is required to discard. And uh, uh, bio waste means in this aspect, a biodegradable garden or park waste, food and kitchen waste from households, offices, uh, restaurants, 
wholesale, uh, canteens, caterers, and retail premises, and comparable waste from food processing plants. So actually by this definition, we are already limited uh, in, 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 in our uh, yeah, utilization because most of the material we have in our garbage bin is waste. When it comes to industry and when we have some uh, slaughter waste or we have some pomace from um, uh, uh, apple juice production, for instance, then that is all of a sudden a byproduct. And a byproduct is a byproduct when a further use of the substance or the object, uh, object is certain or the substance or object can be used directly without any further processing other than normal industrial practice, or the substance or object is produced as an integral part of a production process and further use is lawful. And the substance or object fulfills all relevant product, environmental and health protection requirements for the specific use and will not lead to overall adverse environmental and human health impacts. So, here we have already a lot of information in it. So whenever we deal with organic waste, we have to make sure that we uh, do not uh, uh, harm the environment or human health. And this is this makes it very complicated for waste and for bio waste because we have always to include in uh, a process for the yeah, sanitation or hygienization of the material. So when we when we have a waste, so let's let's say the topic today is bio waste. So when we have a waste, so we have to deal with the waste. So what should we do? We have to take care that we, as I just mentioned, do not endanger human health and the environment. So it should be without risk to water, air, soil, plants, or animals. It should be without causing a noisance through noise or odors and without adversely affecting the countryside or places of special interest. So I believe most of us are aware that we should not harm human health and environment and we should not uh, um, contaminate uh, uh, the environment, uh, systems, water or soil and so on and so on but still it's it's very difficult to um yeah to convince people to uh, apply more sophisticated uh, uh, waste utilization processes even when we take care of all the requirements because we have the definition waste and and bio waste and we have the definition of byproducts and it's pretty clear what should be done with it The uh, European Waste Framework Directive also tells us that we shall take measures to encourage the recycling, including composting, digestion of bio waste. We should encourage home composting. And last but not least, we should promote the use of materials produced from bio waste. So I totally agree that A and B is already yeah, pretty far. So we have composting and digestion implemented. And uh, 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 this is running, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's running nicely, but uh, point C, we have actually not really a process available for the material utilization of bio waste. So, and here we also have a, a, a tension between a waste management and bioeconomy. So those guys from the waste, waste management uh, call material utilization of waste when uh, something is used as a fertilizer after composting or after digestion. But for me, as a, as a guy from the bioeconomy sector, for me, this is not uh, material utilization, actually. Material utilization means for me that we really use the materials in the bio waste. We use the fibers, the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fats, the, the fatty acids, amino acids, and so on and so on. So the, the real chemical potential. And this is, we, I guess all people from the bioeconomy sector can uh, agree on this. So this is a real material utilization, not just fertilizer application. Of course, that is important and it should be done, but it's not the end of the 
of the story. So we have, as I just mentioned, three processes running. You can see here on top, it's the composting. And we can see here, it's the incineration, for instance, or you can see here the anaerobic digestion. And, and, and this is done for the, for the food waste in, in, in Germany. And we have quite a lot of food waste in Germany. So 15 million tons was produced in 2012. So the number did not change, uh, uh, did not reduce, it did increase. So prevention is very important in, 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 for the food waste. So half of it is actually avoidable. So around 7.5 million tons can be avoided if people behave properly and, and, and take care what they buy and what they eat and, and, and what they prepare. But still, even if we subtract the 50% avoidable food waste, we have still uh, 7.5 to 8 million tons that should be treated. And in my opinion, not really uh, using composting, incineration, and, 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 and anaerobic digestion. And luckily, uh, disposing organic waste um, has been banned in European Union since 2005. So I talked about the, 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 the options we have, which go beyond the state of the art. And here you can see uh, food waste as well. Of course, we have also some organic residues here, which are not part of the topic today. We only focus on the bio waste. And we have quite a lot of carbohydrates, proteins, fat, amino acids, phosphate, as I just mentioned. We have uh, glucose, we have fructose, we have so many of, of, of nice compounds which uh, should find an application. And uh, the application could be that we give all into a biorefinery. It's of course, extremely complex process. It's not as easy as you can see here. It's not just a pile or a, a tube fired or a, just a, a vessel. It's, a, it's a, a long, long process from fermentation to uh, downstreaming to separation. And it's complicated, but we can get many, many different products of value. We can get food, we can get feed biomaterials, biopolymers, chemicals, biofuels, pharmaceutical, antioxidants, power, and heat. So the product portfolio is very large and we can get a higher economic value than just composting, uh, composing it. But still it's complex and we have to convince people to implement such technologies and to, yeah, to, 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 to operate it in, 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 in in a way uh, like the composting, incineration, or anaerobic digestion. Here you can see uh, uh, yeah, a few examples what can be done with the organic waste. I collected some uh, some of my 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 work actually, but it's, it's there are many 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 other works available or studies available. Um, we can take the material and produce, for instance algal biomass. You can see chlorella pyrenoidosa, which produces a couple of uh, interesting fatty acids, and the fatty acids can be used as fatty acids for food and feed purpose, but they can also be uh, chemically modified uh, epoxidation in this case to produce a bioplasticizer. You know, take the waste as a substrate for Halomonas boliviensis, for instance. Uh, this uh, particular strain produces polyhydroxypudurate, uh, a bioplastic, which can be directly extracted from the cells and, and applied as a, as a biomaterial. Second example for this is uh, the production of saxinic acid from organic waste using Actinobacillus saxinogenis. And the saxinic acid can be uh, polymerized and we can also get a bioplastic from it. And another uh, um, option is, for instance, Bacillus coagulans, which produces lactic acid from uh, various uh, organic streams. And the lactic acid at the end can also be polymerized and 
gives us PLA, poly lactic acid, plastic material. So yeah, you can see there are many options, many options that gives us a higher value and, and, and allow us to use the, yeah, the potential of the organic waste in, 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 in a more efficient way than just composting and, and, and uh, incineration or anaerobic digestion. And when I talk about the chemical potential, I mean, we should use the, the functionalization of organic compounds, uh, like the oxidation state and so on and so on. So this should not all be oxidized to carbon dioxide and should not be reduced to methane. But what are the challenges for us? So the first challenge is, uh, challenge is of course, we have, to, we have to collect our bio waste in a proper way. So we have to establish a separate collection of bio waste. Um, we in Germany, uh, we have mostly a separate collection. Um, if the people behave properly, then we have no or very little uh, impurities in the bio waste garbage bin. And, and this is point two, we have to in, in future processes to minimize the amount of contaminants. It could be just plastic bag, but it could be also chemical contaminants or microbial contaminants. We have to find investments in the new processes. This is, uh, uh, yeah, I guess probably the most challenging part to convince people to invest in new processes. And we have to focus on education. If you look at the, yeah, the curricula of the uh, study programs, waste management and so on, you can mostly find the uh, conventional processes explained and, and covered, but not the processes coming from the, uh, the bioeconomy sector. So this should be done in the future. So I should, be perfect in time right now. So to conclude, uh, the terms waste and bio waste should not be mixed with byproducts. So whenever we have a byproduct, we are fine and we are on the safe side. We can do whatever we want. If we talk about waste and bio waste, we are yeah regulated by the by the regulations or restricted to regulations. New utilization processes need to be in line with current legalization. Uh, legislation, but this is uh, uh, clear. So the current situation, in my opinion, may change, but may change slowly. And one, one, uh, one guy or one people need to go ahead and 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 uh, try to establish the new processes. This is what I believe is a give space for startups which deal with alternative utilization uh, processes to enter the market. So thank you very much. That was uh, the uh, last slide of my first presentation. And uh, I would like to start a discussion with you about it. Well, thank you very much, uh, Daniel. I'm very pleased indeed that you uh, kept well uh, in the time. Um, before we go into some question and answers, I just want to check up. Um, perhaps Anita can uh, reflect on that. Did the did the, the the Latvian part the um, the translation did this follow uh, smoothly? Did are we all catching up on this content? Can you? Yes, everything worked just fine. Thank you. Oh, that's that's good to hear. Thank you. So um, I, I thought that's quite a challenge to uh, to translate this simultaneously. Uh, this is a very complex. I can thing. imagine. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, <clears throat> and I uh, I address the audience with it, please um, come in uh, through the chat so we can uh, look at the chat. And uh, you can chat in, in Latvian if you want in your Latvian screen, and then uh, the translators will translate it. Um, but first of all, um, I, I think uh, you 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 directed us in the right direction because this this is this part today is mainly focusing on on business and the companies, the, the commercial side, the, the market side of the bio waste. But uh, we see many possibilities, new technologies, uh, and uh, treat waste as a as a as a as a raw material. But what I 
but perhaps you can reflect on that, but do you see any viable business cases uh, uh, that, that the, the, the market can make money on this uh, bio waste? Or do, will we always have to provide the market with uh, what we do now with material with a negative value so, so they get money to pro process it? Or will be, there be uh, business cases in the future that we do not need to do that anymore, then we can buy the waste? Can you reflect on that shortly, Daniel? Uh, I, I believe there is space to make money from waste. Um, I'm not sure uh, about the uh, bio waste from households um, at least in germany this uh, the, the bio waste from households uh, this uh, this belongs to the local waste managers who have the the power and they collect it they have uh, they have all the material um, if we if we think about a startup um, uh, in producing new processes uh, it might not be the the the, the, the first yeah, the best way to focus on the on the on the household waste, but all the materials, all the waste materials from the industry, from uh, restaurants, from canteens, or so, those waste streams can be collected from uh, uh, yeah private uh, uh, private organizations, so to say, and um, there is there is the possibility. It depends, of course, on the process afterwards, but. Um, if we, if we, for instance, consider um, waste from 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 slaughterhouse, then we have a defined waste stream, and we can use the definition of the biomass composition to design a process which can be uh, economically feasible at the end, and we can take out the carbohydrates, we can take out the proteins, we can take out the lipids and to establish different uh, yeah, strengths of utilization. So it's not focused to one product, we have uh, a portfolio of different products. And as long as we have a, a, a portfolio of different products, I believe it is economically feasible. And I have been talking actually to a private uh, um, waste manager in Germany who are interested in establishing new processes and they also believe that it is economically feasible to do other processes than just composting or biogas production. They also see the value afterwards. Let's say for instance let's let's take the the alkyl biomass production as an example. So we, we use the uh, nutrients coming from the waste to, uh, as a nutrient source for microalgae, so for heterotrophic ones. They take up the, the nutrients, produce biomass, and the biomass contains uh, pigments and, and high-valuable proteins. And if we are able to separate the, the, the uh, products or the, the, the biomass compartments of interest afterwards, I absolutely see uh, that this is possible to earn money. Of course, uh, back to your question, of course, it would be nice at the beginning to have uh, the negative value included. Uh, this is it's a, give some, it's, it's like a booster, you know, you have a, a certain uh, amount of money already if you accept the waste, and then you can develop your business. And at the end, I guess this will be, this will be gone. And, and, and people also will realize uh, that this waste material is actually not of no value, but it has value and then they will sell it at a certain price. Yeah, yeah. That's quite a dilemma, of course. Uh, if, if the material loses its negative value, there will be winners in this, this game, but there will be also be losers because they, the, the losers build their business cases on the so-called gate fees. And once you lose the gate fee, which is in a way a good development, there will be losers on this side. But that's an, that's another discussion. Uh, and then a short ref, short reflection on the fact that um, that there's technology and there's rules and regulations, but there are also people are, are involved, ordinary people in their businesses and in their homes, and they are they should be supported to, to, to treat their waste in a proper way so the market can use it. Don't you think that we sometimes tend to forget the psychological effect of those citizens and those companies that are 
well, they are expected to separate and to treat it properly, but, but that in, in practice, it doesn't work like that. What, could you reflect on that? How can we help the communities, not just the households, but everybody in the communities to, to, to do a step forward and to bring this separation and this treating biomass as, as a product? Yes, um, I can reflect on this. Um, last year, uh, we were successful in uh, uh, applying for the uh, German Sustainability Award. So we were uh, uh, one of three finalists. And in our concept, we promised um, a local way of utilizing uh, utilizing organic waste we we designed a container where uh, we produce microalgal biomass from the organic waste and um, one aspect uh, was that we wanted to include citizen around uh, and, and we we wanted that people around participate so they part People participate if they can feel it makes sense, and 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 in this way we promise actually that the revenue we got uh, or we get from the from the products will be beneficial to the people around. But there might be a certain payback. So if if you money, yeah, money decides at the end. The money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> changes behavior. So we 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 thought if we can, uh, uh, if 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 we can motivate people to give us their waste in a in 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 in, in a separate way, it's not 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 including impurities and so on. So the purer the material is, the more value can we get out. So the the more revenue the people uh, will get at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, money helps a lot. Yeah. Before we go <laughs> to the the second uh, presentation, Daniel, because uh, time is up now. Um, Perhaps I, I can suggest that, that uh, in the technological world, we should team up with the more soft and the more psychological colleagues in, uh, in, in science to, to combine the forces of technology and, 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 and psychology. Because uh, without the social aspect, the, the behavioral aspect, we, we cannot uh, move forward. I see uh, some questions coming in. Um, how much at this moment we should worry about projects um, safety, which comes from households um, coming in. So the safety of products, eh? there, there are uh, medicines, there are microplastics, uh, toxic uh, compounds. Yes. So while you are preparing nice, nice products, are you are we aware enough that there's always a risk in that involved? Could you short reflect on that before we, before we carry on? Yes. Uh, um... We are aware that if we talk about circular economy, you're not uh, not only circulating all the good, but all the bad as well. So if we the the the, the plastic uh, issue, for instance, uh, is uh, visible already in in in, in the compost we producing in in our local composting plants and. Um, we, this is what, what, what why, why I think the, we have to reduce the impurities and contaminants. So plastic, you can see, you can separate the plastic also after composting, but it's a lot of work and it's, uh, it's, it's nasty. But if it comes to uh, pharmaceuticals or ecotoxic compounds, this is a really a real challenge. Uh -huh. So a lot, 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 lot of energy and, and work needs to be done in order to reflect on uh, this uh, uh, on, on, the, on the contamination of the chemical side and also the microbiology should be kept under control. This is this is a challenge. It's still a challenge in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's recognized, of course. That's, so that's, yeah. I think that's an answer to uh, Martin Nicholas's this question. Thank you, Martin. Um, they include retention of organic matters. Yeah, we will come to that later to the nutrient part, to the, the, the phosphorus and the nitrogen uh, agricultural nutrients. Um, okay, it's time. Uh, are you ready for your second uh, round? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Did you have some I coffee am. in between, or um... so I have. I have my coffee here. <laughs> okay. Well, another uh, seventeen and a half minutes for the second one. Good. So, uh, just a second. So here we are. Yes, we are. 
So, okay, second one. So in this talk, I'm, I'm going to focus on the, yeah, what I call innovative bio-waste management and utilization technologies. And I give you a few examples from my own work. And um, we are in a competition. Uh, as I just mentioned, we have three processes which are conventionally used, uh, composting and incineration and digestion. And if we compete with the three simple processes, our new processes need to be simple as well, need to be cost efficient, controllable, flexible. It should create a value and it should sanitize waste. And um, you have seen the, the, the graphic uh, how a biorefinery can look like. And it's the, the long line from uh, uh, cultivation of microorganisms to uh, downstreaming and uh, extraction of a particular compound. So this is probably not simple at all for, for people outside this area. So we need expert knowledge. It uh, can be cost efficient because the, the, the value we create can be higher and, and can uh, yeah, counterbalance the costs we have to invest in, in, in uh, establishing and in, in running the technologies. I have some personal issues right now to create a process which is flexible, which can be adapted to different kinds of waste streams. So we have over the year, uh, a variation in, in composition, you know, we have different bio waste in the summer months, we have uh, done in the in, 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 in winter, uh, different uh, materials available. So uh, uh, a process should work with all material appearing in a certain area. And of course, last but as I mentioned, the sanitation is uh, is important and, and, and most of the processes uh, I'm working on uh, do not allow actually a sanitation and, and uh, cleaning or, or an in, in inactivation of organic waste. So we have to put uh, in, in uh, like an autoclavation process always in front of it to destroy at least the microbiology, which can harm people and environment. But let's let's have a look and, and see what can we actually do with food waste as an example. So food waste, it looks nasty. It is, uh, it is uh, yeah, it is, it is a nasty material. We all know, and it's, there's a reason why people uh, want to get rid of it. But if we ignore this picture and just look at what food waste actually contains, and we can see we have 60% carbohydrates, we have 30% lipids, we have 10% proteins. And for, yeah, for, for, for those who are working with microorganisms, they know that are excellent uh, substrates to uh, products or compounds to produce yeah, uh, uh, media for microorganisms. This is actually how we started the whole food waste story. We put everything in the reactor. In this case, it was 100 gram food waste. We inoculated with two fungi, Aspergillus abermary and Aspergillus ricei added one liter of water. And after 24 hours, hydrolysis or liquefaction of the material was done and we obtained a bit more than 30 grams of glucose per 100 gram food waste. We obtained uh, roughly 0.39 grams phosphate from 100 gram uh, food waste and we roughly obtained 0.25 grams FAN, which stands for free amino nitrogen, basically amino acids. So using this simple process, we could recover 85% of carbohydrates, carbohydrates, 30% of nitrogen compounds, and 100% of phosphate. At least the phosphate part was, in this example, uh, very surprising because we did not add any phytases or enzymes which help to degrade uh, 
yeah, uh, uh, polyphosphates. So it just appeared from the from the waste because could uh, yeah e extracted by water basically. And here you can see uh, uh, an illustration uh, uh, which shows how much we get actually at the end and, and, and how much is remaining uh, after the hydrolysis. So starting with 432 gram dry waste, we have after hydrolysis 86 gram dry remaining solids available. And you can see here it's basically all the fats and, 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 and the fatty acids, which if you want to do so, this material can go in a biogas plant to produce energy from it. But what was interesting for me was this part, the hydrolysate. So after hydrolysis, it went through a filtration step. And this hydrolysate contains uh, 143 grams per liter glucose, 1.8 grams per liter FAN, and 1.6 gram per liter phosphate. And uh, this is very interesting and using this hydrolysate you can produce so many uh, uh, biomass so many or cultivate so many bacteria so many fungi and so many heterotrophic microalgae that the, uh, the product portfolio which you can get from the biomass is yeah, unlimited more or less one example which uh, uh, you may consider uh, the cultivation of Chlorella vulgaris. Again, here you can see the food waste which we used in our process and you get the hydrolysate. Uh, we uh, 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 fed it with the microalgae. So they converted the glucose and the amino acids and the phosphate. You can see Chlorella vulgaris, how it looked like. And then you can take the biomass and uh, focus on food and feed. This is also a very interesting aspect because we have actually the possibility to convert a waste material in a food and feed stream. Technically, of course, uh, from a legislation, it is uh, not allowed, but technically this is possible. And perhaps in the future, we may close the link between waste streams and, and food and feed streams. And you can produce fuels, but as I have shown in the last presentation, you can also take the fatty acids and produce some plasticizer, so compounds of a higher value. A nice example which uh, keeps me still busy is the production of Galdieria sulfuraria. This is also a heterotrophic microalgae which we um, uh, uh, cultivated in 2017 in presence of uh, also hydrolyzed food waste, here you can see the food waste, the hydrolysate, and uh, here Galgeria. Galgeria has the uh, uh, advantage that it grows at a low pH, uh, pH 2 to pH 4, so it survives acidic conditions. It uh, grows at a higher temperature, 40, 45, 50 degrees, so the low pH and the high temperature excludes um, uh, uh, contaminants, uh, at least uh, bacteria. So there's no sterilization necessary to run this process. And Galgeria is uh, one of the few algal and cyanobacteria streams which produce uh, phycocyanin. And phycocyanin, you can see the color is uh, not really green, but it's green bluish. So phycocyanin is a blue pigment which is used in, 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 in food for, for coloring of, of food. Another example, Chlorella parinoidosa, is also a heterotrophic microalgae. So it looks very green, even it is uh, grown on food waste and without sunlight. And here it's uh, also a way to uh, uh, convert waste into proteins and you have proteins and for food and non-food or feed and non-feed applications and a couple of fatty acids again, which can uh, be used for various applications. And you can see here, this is just lab scale, but you get an impression 
This is not uh, as easy as uh, a simple biogas production plan. So you have many, many pumps. Uh, you have to regulate the pH. You have to feed the microalgae with a certain uh, feed uh, stream to keep nutrient level at a, at a certain point. It is, uh, it is more complex uh, and it needs to be shown that this can be done uh, decentralized at areas where the waste appears and uh, in the controllable and uh, flexible and in the best case also automatic way. Another process which is actually as simple as a biogas production is the production of lactic acid. So again, it starts with food waste. And uh, here in this example, you can uh, see uh, uh, it's an open fermentation. There's, uh, there's no lid on the vessel. So it's just actually a vessel which is steered. And we have a pH electrode in it to, uh, to keep the pH at a, at a certain level. And we, we get uh, the sugars from the food waste, also the amino acids from the food waste, the lactic acid bacteria take up the nutrients from the food waste and produce lactic acid. And you can see the conversion efficiency of, uh, of this process. So it, it was around 80%, meaning that 80% of the sugars coming from food waste has been converted into lactic acid. So this process is simple. You just need a stirring. It is robust. We uh, expect that we can use it for different kinds of waste. Still, uh, in, at least in our case, it was tested for, for, for food waste. But there is a colleague of mine and also a friend of mine, uh, Joachim Wienus, who, uh, from the ATP in, in, in Potsdam, Germany, who did try the lactic acid production uh, for the conversion of bio waste. So not just food waste, but real, real bio waste. Based. The whole process works under non sterile conditions, so no sterilization needed. But still, we have to find an answer on the question so what about the economy? Does it make sense uh, at the end? And we did the calculation, and we um, have here different scenarios uh, where we uh, used uh, continuous cultivation. Uh, for instance, we have an indigenous uh, consortium, so a consortium coming from food waste actually, which we applied uh, uh, as a biocatalysator. So the, the indigenous consortium converted the sugar to the lactic acid. We did it continuously at a dilution rate of 0.4. Uh, roughly, and also here at one uh, step it was 1.15. We also uh, uh, added in, in, in two examples uh, uh, another strain, a streptococcus strain, which we have found um, uh, a good converter of uh, sugars and lactic acid. And uh, in this example, scenario seven, we use only the indigenous culture from food waste. And here you can see, uh, the results of uh, economy calculation. So if we can see here the payback time and here the number of inhibitants. So that means actually the number of, of, of waste coming and the size of the, of the, of the plant. So already at, um, at, at around 200,000 uh, people scale, the payback time in scenario seven would be roughly 10 years. So after 10 years, the investment costs will be, yeah, you will get the, the costs back. Before it was shown that uh, the payback time is, is really long if you, if you do it at a uh, smaller scale. With increasing scale, the payback time uh, further reduces. And if you follow scenario seven, then you have, uh, or, or scenario 6.1 and five, you have a payback time of two, three years. So after two, three years or maximum five years, you get your investment costs back and you make basically money. But I was still not happy with it because we only focused, therefore, on one product, on, 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 on lactic acid. So we did try to include the production of a second product as well. So, and um, 
we focused on a, on on a second uh, uh, product which has a low value actually but a high demand this is ethanol so we we used again our basic uh, setup food waste and the open fermentation with the indigenous uh, culture and at the same time we added baker's yeast just simple yeast from saccharomyces uh, cerevisiae yeah. and we were looking can we control the process uh, under non steroidal conditions and, and and in order to produce lactic acid or ethanol or both at the same time in a, yeah in the most efficient way and what we have found was very interesting this is just um, just a, a, a simple illustration of what we found out so here you can see the graph uh, the red dots stands for glucose the blue triangle uh, is reflects the lactic acid concentration the open diamond uh, reflects ethanol and the, the 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 black or the the full diamond reflects sucrose concentration so under ph controlled conditions so ph6 all the time we did see so first of all the glucose concentration increase it's because we added also an enzyme which degraded the material simultaneously so after around six hours the glucose concentration decreased and decreased to zero after 24 hours uh, fructose concentration decreased as well the same applied for the sucrose concentration which also decreased over time so but at the ph of six we found a concentration of around 40 grams per liter lactic acid after 24 hours and we found a concentration of 20 grams per liter ethanol so here we could all of the sudden produce two pro products at the same time lactic acid and ethanol and even we had a mixture of lactic acid bacteria and yeast so both were uh, efficiently converting the uh, sugars into the respective products but and we played around, uh, around, and we we focused on the the control of the process. So, is it possible to 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 to, to control the uh, process towards uh, a certain product? And in one case, we just left the pH uncontrolled. So we didn't control the pH. We just uh, started the fermentation and 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 waited for twenty four hours, and then we were interested to see what we did find so again glucose increased due to the uh, hydrolysis of the food waste but it decreased uh, to zero after 24 hours this again uh, fructose was consumed uh, sucrose was consumed but here in this case only ethanol was produced at higher amounts so here we found 50 grams per liter ethanol and only yeah, 10 grams per liter lactic acid. So all of a sudden we had a process actually, which was controllable just by modifying the pH and uh, uh, establishing a pH of six again after a certain time of pH uncontrolled conditions did change the profile again. So all of a sudden we had more lactic acid and less ethanol so this was actually very interesting and uh, we had the process which works as simple as the biogas plant because again uh, lactic acid fermentation does not need aeration it just need uh, stirring and uh, that's all and heating of course we have to keep a certain temperature but that's all and just by modifying the ph we could uh, modify our product portfolio and we had energy and material production at the same same time, energy is the ethanol stands for energy and lactic acid for material. To conclude, um, we we if we if we use food waste or organic waste, uh, bio waste in, in in our more innovative processes, we can 
first of all, mitigate, mitigate waste related environmental issues, but we can combine it with value creation. So there is, uh, in my opinion, a, a cooperation with relevant stakeholders necessary. And this should be useful. And we should answer the question, so who has interest in, in, in certain products? Where is the demand and what resources do we actually have to establish uh, those processes? So it doesn't make sense to have a lactic acid production plant in an area where you have no need for, for lactic acid. So, and it doesn't make sense to establish lactic acid uh, process in an area where we have no resources for lactic acid production. So it should, uh, should be balanced. Uh, catchment area is very important. So, you need a certain amount of waste, but you cannot make the catchment area as large as possible because logistics are very important here. So you have to spend energy and time and money to carry uh, all the waste materials and uh, food waste, for instance, is rich in water. And in most cases, you transport water from point A to point B. So, and I'm very curious to see who is first to start. So who is starting uh, a new yeah, waste utilization process, which goes beyond uh, composting and incineration and digestion. And this is, it's going to be very, very interesting in the future. And yeah, this is, I would like to finish my second talk and uh, looking forward again to a discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you uh, very much. It's uh, still uh, we are within the, the time frame. Thank you very much. This is an interesting question. Who is the first to start? But who, who, who would you like to be the first mover in this uh, business? A, a big investor or a short, small startup? Who, who, who's the dreamed partner in this for you? Mm. I'm actually on it already, so I would like to do it by myself. Uh, <laughs> so I, I try uh, to, to get it running and I notice that we need both a startup, a startup which brings the new ideas and uh, thinking outside the box, but you need an investor. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. to invest money. We realized uh, for our waste to resource unit, that was the process which was uh, uh, in, in, in the competition for the sustainability award. If we would like to, to build uh, such a process on a prototype scale, you need already half a million. So it's, it's, it's pretty tough to get the money and uh, it's a bit like what, what comes first, uh, hen or egg? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you need a prototype to show that it's working, but uh, without a prototype, you don't get money. So. Yes, but you have to think big. Um, my experience, it's easier to get a half a million than, uh, uh, than say, 50,000 out of the market. So, so don't, don't, don't limit your, uh, your ambitions. Perhaps uh, our next uh, presentation uh, would could also uh, touch on this how to how to use european money for those uh, next steps forward and in the, the the previous presentation i suggested we should team up with more the the social and the psychological part to to help people to move into this uh, this this behavior aspect but don't you think we should also uh, bring in the legal expert? Because what we see now that the market is, is developing, the technology is developing, but the rules and regulations about safety are also developing. I know in the lactic acid production, it's, that is, it is a big market already, um, but that's hampered very much by uh, strict regulations that the use of waste material for, for instance, food grade, um, uh, uh, products is, is very much restricted. Could you, do you have, are you aware of that, that these rules and regulations are also developing? Yes. Um, we, at least we hope it is, uh, it is developing. Uh, and, um, but we have the advantage here that we can first focus on the non-food and non-feed application of uh, bioplastics and, and so on. So there is a, already a market in the non-food and non-feed sector. And we can wait for good times and wait for uh, the application or the, the, 
the change in restrictions to apply the material also in the food and feed uh, streams. It started, it started, uh, it is it is actually a bit uh, provocative, and uh, we we started thinking about it together with the uh, German Institute for um, a Food Technology in in, in Quakenbrück. This was just an idea. Why can't we uh, use waste materials in the in the uh, feed and food sector? And of course, it is uh, legally restricted. It's not possible, but it might be in the future. And you can see it for the insects. Uh, it's it's developing slowly. So, um, but we, I can actually give the advice first to focus on the non-food and non-feed area and then wait for good, better times and then focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, it's, 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 it's smart to, to, to follow the, the first easier routes and do not waste your energy on, on the very difficult one. Um, another very interesting development is, of course, the energy prices. Um, if you look at the ethanol prices at this moment, they're, they're skyrocketing at this moment. Huh? There's a, a great demand in the world for ethanol. So uh, for the ethanol production, I would say lower your pH than uh, raise your uh, ethanol output in your, uh, in your processor. Because that, there's an interesting money line. Okay, thanks very much. Um, have a quick look at the chat. I don't think Ardis, no, there, there are no new chat questions. You, I see you removed your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, normally, I would give you um, a bunch of flowers and you would leave the stage, but unfortunately, we cannot do that here. Uh, but perhaps we'll, we'll meet again in live. Um, and on behalf of you, I suggest if people are int interested in your research or context, um, I'm sure they are uh, free to, to contact you. Are you open for approaching? Yes, I, 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 I'm writing my email address in the chat so everybody oh, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your presentation will be available uh, soon after we, we finish this so uh, we can look it all up. And uh, it's good to know that you're also looking for an investor for half a million. I, I took note of that. So uh, perhaps it will bring you something. Okay, thanks very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, let's go to the, the next part. It's um, uh, Dr. Miguel Angel Suarez Valdez from uh, from Spain. Yes, I see you're already uh, in the picture. Thank you. Thank you, Franz. You will also uh, present in, in English, of course, but you, <coughs> you are from Spain. Could you explain shortly what this um, um, acronym HOPE stands for? I couldn't find it. HOPE. HOPE. Uh... HOOP is a, a Horizon 2020 project to, to boost uh, projects in, uh, in urban circular bioeconomy in but different it, cities and regions. Is, is it the, the H-O-O-P? Is that an acronym? Or that, what, does it say anything? Or Yeah, it's an acronym hub for boosting projects uh, in urban bioeconomy in, oh, in yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a long HOOP, very, yeah, very yeah, intuitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in my language, in the Dutch language, hope means hope. <laughs> also, yeah. it, it's a big hope also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, puzzled a bit because I saw your presentation. You have 25 slides and you saw what happened with, uh, with the previous uh, presentation. Yeah. He had 13 slides and he could barely stay within time. So it's quite a challenge to, uh, to, uh, to stay within time. But I will I'm try... I will try my best. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Uh, you present your own uh, presentation. You know how to do that on Zoom. Uh, let me see. Uh, Something is moving. Yes, there it is. Oh, I see your whole. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, it's coming in. I, now you can do, start your presentation. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, great. Go yeah. here. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good morning and thank you very much for this opportunity to present uh, Hub Project. I'm Miguel Angel Suarez Valdez from, from CETEMA, the Technological Center of Energy and Environment in, in Cartagena in, uh, in Spain. And we are project coordinators of uh, Hub Project, which is very... Uh, which is focused in uh, the management of uh, urban bio waste uh, with circular economy methods. 
First, uh, we have to say that uh, most of the European population is living in cities, in urban areas, which consume most of the natural resources, the energy, and produce uh, almost 50% uh, of global waste. But considering uh, this issue with cities, uh, there are some targets in, uh, in European regulation which are coming in a short term. As is, for example, that the implementation of selective collection of urban bio waste is going to become compulsory within the end of 2023. Even though in many countries and in many cities, it's already done since many years ago, there are many municipalities and many cities all around Europe which uh, haven't started yet. So this is going to generate a huge amount of urban bio waste that it will be required to do something with it. Instead of seeing it as a problem, it should be seen as an opportunity, because this is the basis of urban circular bioeconomy. Using that urban bio waste instead of a waste as an opportunity and as a raw material, as Daniel said previously, to prepare new bioproducts. But what are the conditions now? And first of all, what is uh, the urban bio waste? Well, uh, it is the, the organic fraction that we can find in, in municipal waste and that it is and will be selectively collected, such as food waste, uh, but also green waste from parks and gardens, urban wastewater sludge, and also special uh, streams of waste, such, uh, such as used cooking oils or spent coffee grounds. It should be also taken into account that the reactions from the, from the traditional methods of treatment of urban bio waste as composting and anaerobic digestion are also considered a bio waste. So this takes us, what is the current status now? Is that, uh, as, as it was explained very well by Daniel before, there are too few options for, for treatment of bio waste. We are talking about composting and anaerobic digestion just to, to cover the whole diversity in, in cities, in regions, in towns of Europe. And uh, this that can work for some cities and some places might not work for others. So the same solution does not work everywhere. And it's a bit difficult to use the same solution for, every, for everybody. Besides this, uh, it is known the issues of these uh, methods, which is, for example, the, the marketability of compost in some cases or the, the fact that anaerobic digestion is very sensitive to quality of bio waste, especially thinking on, on places where the, the selective collection will be implemented new, and that this can cause technical problems. So we need to find, it is needed to find new technologies to get higher value from urban bio waste and fractions and, and to get something more. This we have been working in, in Project Hoop with, with a state of the art, that we are working on, on doing something publishable. So instead of compost of biogas, we can open the, the market sectors into, into chemistry, for example, by chemical building blocks, ethanol, biosolvents, biodegradable biopolymers. This is a very interesting uh, market sector. Cosmetics, nutrition, uh, with the issues with food, but also things that are improving with animal feed, thinking on single cell protein, insects and also in, in agriculture with high value uh, agricultural products or circular fertilizers produced from, from phosphorus or nitrate. So going into, into real cases, uh, we cannot jump directly from the flask in the lab into, into an industrial full-scale plant. This uh, requires several steps. These are pilots, these are demonstration plants, and uh, the, I'm, I'm going to present some cases in, in some of the cities that are participating in Hope. The first one is the city of Almere in the Netherlands, which is the youngest city in, in the country and has a lot of uh, water and a lot of green areas. This that uh, is very nice, that means also generating a huge amount of, of green waste from, for example, aquatic plants but also from invasive plants like uh, the toxic uh, giant hogweed. This, this generates a, a big amount of, of biomass and instead of seeing it as a, as a problem, it is seen as an opportunity because from them, they have been developed processes to, to prepare uh, biocomposites, traffic signs, benches or eco cement on pilot scale. Then the second case is the, is the case of the region of Bergen in Norway. That's because of the, their characteristics, the orography, 
the, the agriculture value chain has very limited application. So Bergen or, or better Beer, the company Beer, has decided to try to find a symbiosis with the, with the local industry to, to close the loop and go from, from food to food. And uh, in this sense, their, um, their project is to, to use Oreca bio waste uh, to, for uh, microalgae cultivation, uh, for feed and using in aquaculture for salmons, but also the, the production of insects, in this case, mealworm. So that there is a symbiosis and the local economy can benefit from the treatment of urban bio waste. The third case uh, is a combined uh, Murcia, uh, in Spain and Kalumborg in Denmark. They are part of the Horizon 2020 project Valley Waste, which um, uh, provides a, a new solution for anaerobic digestion. The first step is the traditional anaerobic digestion, but instead of using biogas uh, for burning and digested for agriculture, they provide new uh, high value uh, uh, applications, as for example, the use of, uh, of the biogas to produce single cell protein for, for feed applications and uh, the digestate to recover the nitrogen and the phosphorus to create sustainable fertilizers and uh, the digestate, the organic part to grow black soldier fly larvae for applications in, in feed. So uh, going into what are the local initiatives, because uh, we are talking about technologies, but at the end, the ones who are uh, taking care of urban bio waste are, are the cities. So uh, there are some local initiatives to, to promote uh, circular economy. In the case of Almere, for example, the, the most important is the, the concept of raw materials collective with the participation of the municipality and, and local companies. Uh, supporting uh, startups and providing the space and, uh, and the bio waste for uh, startups to, to start their pilots for valorization. And this concept is the one that has generated all those pilots uh, for construction materials and for traffic signs. Also, the inclusion of, uh, of circularity parameters in processes of, of public tendering is an, an important initiative in Almere. In the case of Greater Porto in Portugal, uh, managed by Lipor, here the, the data science is very, is very important. The, the application of uh, all the, the collection of data with a data center and a waste observatory to, to treat and to monitor and scan how are the, the streams and how evolution the, the generation of bio waste and also the quality. Also something very interesting, uh, a very interesting initiative in, in Porto is the going beyond the concept of waste management and shifting into, into production of bioproducts. This is the case of Nutrimais. Nutrimais is a compost, but it's a compost of very high quality because the, the focus is uh, put not on, on getting rid of the waste, but to getting a, a product of the highest possible quality. And also the cooperation with, uh, with research institutions and and trying to promote the, the prevention of waste. And uh, in the case of Murcia in Spain, the, the development of a strategy for circular economy has taken into account the, the public uh, opinion with a public consultation period for, for developing what are the, the ideas and, and what is proposed. The stakeholder engagement is, is fundamental for making circular bioeconomy work. Uh, this includes uh, awareness raising campaigns and also the, the use of, of biopatrols, which are groups of people to promote and teach people how to uh, uh, collect uh, separately in, in a right way. Because when starting from zero, this is something important, as, as we have uh, mentioned. But, uh, urban circular bioeconomy uh, requires uh, and will require manpower. But uh, not from, uh, from only one side, the, the one that we are thinking all on selective collection, transport and treatment, but also from, from a multidisciplinary approach. Because in many cases, the, the technologies for treatment are industrial processes. So they will be created uh, uh, jobs uh, with an industrial nature. Besides that, uh, one of the, the concepts that Hoop Project wants to bring is the, is the tailor-made solution. If we have more and more uh, technologies to, 
to provide solutions to the cities, it is required a project development assistance. This requires knowledge in engineering, in financial engineering, in business models, in public procurement, and a, a high level of skills that are required to, to provide this, this consulting, this advisory for, for choosing the right solution and, and to make uh, this uh, work. And the, the other important part is the, the communication in terms of, uh, of stakeholder engagement and awareness raising, because at the end, the, the raw material depends on what people is doing. And then, I don't know how I'm in, in time, I would like to, to present the concept of, of hoop related with circular euro and bioeconomy. Because we have we are talking about circular economy, and that's great, that is very good. But then why it is not widespread? Why it is not developed everywhere already? Because there are challenges, challenges with the quantity and the quality of the of the bio waste, with the social access, acceptance of the bioproducts, with the marketability of the bioproducts, but the scale up, the scale up is very important because things might work on lab, but might not work on, on big scale. There are many variables that need to be taken into account. So this requires making pilots. This requires making demonstration plans. And also the legislation that we were, that we were mentioning that there are barriers in some of the value chains. So how to try to unlock the investments and, for, and especially how to help the cities that want to, to do something different that composting and biogas get into this jungle of, of uncertainty. Then we are providing in, in Hope Project a solution, at least to, to give to, to the cities the, the project development assistance from a multidisciplinary point of view, uh, so that the, the budget of the project is able to, to unlock investments in the, in the eight cities and, and regions around Europe, so that this can happen so that the, the expertise can help to, to unlock and to, and to overcome the barriers that might come. Uh, the cities and regions uh, that are participating in whole project are the four that I have already mentioned, Almere, Greater Porto, Bergen, Murcia, but also Münster in Germany, Western Macedonia in Greece, Albano in Italy and Kuopio. They were chosen because they show the high diversity in Europe, they, they, they are so different one from each other that they can uh, give us an idea of, of how different cases there are. And this takes us to, to a new concept of waste management is to, to not put the focus on the, on the technology, but to put the focus on, on the final client, which is a city, and to find tailored solutions for each city. How? with a team of experts, of technical partners in different areas of activity, in technology, in environmental, in business models, financial engineering, public procurement, but also, and very important, to, to get the local stakeholder engagement. So the, the concept of, of the project is, yes, we, are use, uh, we have these eight cities and regions that are acting as, as demonstrators, uh, we have a background from uh, three other projects, Valley Waste, Scalibur, and, and Waste Up, and, and a portfolio of, of technologies that could be implemented in the cities. And uh, the technical partners are going to provide project development assistance to, to develop these investment uh, projects. And also considering always the local stakeholders, their engagement and mobilization. This is going to generate a big amount of knowledge, a big amount of experiences, of uh, success, of uh, failures, but that is knowledge. And, uh, and also uh, an important uh, number of best practices. So through a replicability strategy, we want to, to expand and to spread through, through other cities and, and regions of Europe and other stakeholders through online platforms like the Urban Circular by Economy Hub, but especially, uh, especially through the hub network of cities and regions that is going to be, or it's already uh, a network of cities and regions around Europe where uh, they can have access to, to contents of uh, the contents that are generated in, in hub project, to tools especially developed in hub like the circularity level to assess their level of circularity, and especially to, to exchange, to talk each other, 
to to know from each other so that this this combination this uh, flow of information between each other helps uh, europe to to have a a better development of circular bioeconomy so if there is any city or region here i invite to to join to the network and uh, this is what hope tries to uh, to promote is that uh, we are aware that there are many processes on, on lab scale but then we need to go into into the big scale and this takes uh, time uh, takes to to make the pilots takes to make the demonstration plans and uh, this is what what the european commission is is uh, promoting through through funding to to develop this kind of projects and uh, of course the startups uh, this is a big opportunity for them because as uh, I started at the beginning, we are coming to a crucial moment that uh, the selective collection of urban bio waste is going to be compulsory in the whole Europe. And uh, there is going to be a lot of things to do. And, uh, and this, is, this is the moment for change. And this is the moment to find a way to, to overcome the barriers. So thank you very much for your attention. And I, I am open to, to discussion. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Well in time. Great. And um, it's not just a presentation, but you also reach out and you, you ask for, uh, well, to, to join your network. Um, how, how does that work? Can, in, do you look for individual people or can communities or municipalities join you? How would that go? The idea can be, um, they can be municipalities. They can be uh, waste management companies. They can be water management companies, and they can also be clusters of uh, of cities or, or whole regions. I mean, if you get into our uh, uh, our website, you can see that uh, it's a variety. The important is that the the one who is re uh, joining is representing the city or the cluster of cities, because. Uh, the important is to, to see the, the representation of the city so that at the end, the city is the, is the concept. It can yeah. be represented by a municipality, by waste management company. We, we have many, you, you can see. Yeah, interesting. Well, we will we'll, we'll, uh, share this in the, in the, the Baltic region network um, so we can join forces. And as you say, now is the moment. So this, this is, we must uh, use this opportunity. Thank you very much. Can you finish your, uh, your presentation so we, Bring in the the okay. yep. of our talking heads again. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now you see me better. Ah, very good. Um, the, this one question was uh, who can join the network? So uh, that this has been answered. Um, I just, uh, I, I, uh, it's nice to see that you uh, put a large focus on this uh, stakeholder engagement, which connects to what I said before to, to Daniel, let us not forget the ordinary people. Um, but of course, the, the municipalities, the cities are in the best position to communicate with their, with, with their people. Uh, that is an interesting uh, aspect in this, that we talked about the pressure from, uh, from the EU and uh, the new legislations and the, the frameworks from um, uh, from Brussels, um, and then you do not talk much about the national governments, but you focus on the municipalities, the cities. So there's a direct connection between Brussels and the and the, the cities, which is a very interesting development. And that's the, the key of this. The matter is in the municipalities, not in the national governments. Each municipality makes its own choices and has its own strategy. So that's an interesting recognition of this of this unusual aspect um, now you one of the slides you said you had the question how to unlock investments um, that's an interesting question but but where's the answer I mean do you do you look for investments from from the municipalities or you focus more on to unlock investments from from the market players from the the, the big players because the, the, the thing in waste management is that the collection is normally in hands of the cities and the municipalities, but the processing is are often very, very, very big companies, eh? international huge companies. Who do you want to invest, the municipalities or the companies? 
doesn't matter who, as, as far as there is an investment. Of course, this, this depends on the technology, this depends on the opportunities of business, and uh, we are aware of that. But for coming to the point uh, of being uh, attractive for a big investment, it, uh, steps must be taken, studying the conditions, having a business model, having a, a sustainability. We are talking about a very difficult uh, raw material, which is uh, urban bio waste from households. Probably some kind of uh, industrial bio waste is easier because it's easier to characterize and, and you can get uh, something more tailor-made or, or biomass from forest, for example. Yeah. So this, uh, this depends. The, the investments can come uh, either from, from public funding through, through public procurement processes, through European funds, through, through investors, through... So the important, the important is not so much where is coming the money, but the important is that things happen, that things yeah. go on, and yeah. that they go on into a direction that they continue developing. Yeah. We, are, we are aware that uh, in many of these technologies, they might be in their first steps, and they might need help from either from Europe, either from other kind of funds. And in the moment that they are profitable, then it won't be needed to, to pump uh, money into that because then the market itself will make it go around. Yeah. But yeah. to come to that point, it's, it's needed to, to take steps. Yeah. It's, a, it's an investment in future yeah. because if not, we will have mountains and mountains of compost. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do, do you also share the knowledge in your network about the available funds from, from Europe and the, and, 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 the, and the big investors? Do you have, for instance, contact with, with the big multinational uh, players? We have some contacts through, through, an advisory, through an advisory board called the Circular Investors Board. Uh, take into account that we are, uh, we are just in our first year. Yeah. So we are still developing, we are uh, preparing the land to, to grow. And from now on, there are going to be much more uh, information, much more experience, and much more knowledge available. And uh, this will be put into, into knowledge uh, through, through the platforms, through the, through the future hub, because now it's not available yet, and, and through the network. But, this is a good opportunity to, to learn and from many different points of view, not only the, the technological. Yeah, and to, and to share the information is very important because you can learn with each other and from each other. And uh, I know there is quite some money available now in Brussels. It's coming more, especially through the, the whole uh, the energy program and the, the Green Deal. There's a, a tremendous amount of um, money looking for a good destination. So. Connect with Brussels, I would say. Are there any questions from the audience? I'm looking at the chat. So not much coming in. I, I would repeat this invitation from, uh, from Miguel to, uh, to join the network, just link up. It, it's still, you're still early in the process, so it's not too late to join up and join forces. I, I see on your map that uh, the, your, your uh, Engagement in the Baltic is still needs some uh, some expansion. I didn't see any dots and uh, in, uh, in in the three Baltic states. So um, not yet. Uh, open invitation. To we, we hope. Yeah, this will come. And we have uh, plenty of uh, participants from from the area. So this this must this must lead to uh, to steps forward to join forces. Okay, thanks very much. Um, Thank you. Let's move to the second or the, the, the next um, presentation, which is number four already. And we go now towards the market. And I ask uh, Mr. Hans Peter Erhardt from, uh, from Bacon uh, is, he, is he ready? I don't see him yet. Where is Bacon? from Germany.
I'm just asking um, one of my colleagues, Anita, do we know if uh, Mr. Erhard is in the audience already? Yes, I'm checking the list. I also don't see him, unfortunately. Who was the contact person? Is it was uh, perhaps um, Sasha, Sasha Hermos is a contact person. Sasha, can you uh, reflect on the contacts with uh, Mr. Hans Peter Erhard of Bacon? You, we don't see him on the list, eh? I, at least I don't see him. Yes, it seems that Sasha is not present as well. Let's improvise a little bit then, because it would be nice to move to the market, because they have a very interesting concept of, uh, of dry fermentation, which is uh, up and running. It's not a experimental technology, but it's market market proof already. But if he's not there, he cannot present. So we must improvise a little bit. I, could I could I shortly go back to uh, to Miguel? Because um, I still have some questions for you and to also interaction with, uh, with Daniel. Um, we have to improvise a little bit because uh, we're missing a, a presentation. Um, and if we do not uh, find that uh, in a few minutes, then we go over to the to the discussion uh, part, and then we prepare the presentation for Dr. Uh, uh, Nipers from uh, from Latvia. Um, he's he's there. Yeah, he's there. I see uh, Mr. Nipers is uh, is there. Um, of Dr. Uh, Alexis. Yes, I see his uh, his picture is in my screen, but. Um, Daniel, just a case. Eh? You you are a researcher, but you're also interested. Perhaps uh, it's, it's a hidden dream, but you shared it. I believe that you would like to to be an entrepreneur and to to use your knowledge to, and to find five hundred thousand euros to uh, to start a to make a startup. But um, Miguel, is that is that the type of 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 uh, initiatives that you're looking for? That that from the research communities, the, the startups are, are knocking on the doors. Could you reflect on that, Miguel? Startups are very welcome because uh, they are coming with new ideas and fresh air. But uh, we are not we are not close to only to we are not close to startups, but we are not uh, working exclusively with the startups in this uh, in this business. There are also there are also big players who who want to diversify their business and they are uh, they are putting money in the development of uh, of these kind of technologies. These kind of technologies, some of them, they are coming uh, not only from uh, not only for for waste management, but they are adapted into they are adapted from other kind of industrial bio processes. So. That's why there might be some big players going around yeah. there. So, but startups, they are very welcome. Yeah. Uh, the key here is, um, is the reliability of the process. The, because uh, uh, processes and technologies might work on lab scale, but it is fundamental to, to solve the, the rest of, of steps, going to pilot, going to, to demonstration, because there is what uh, what is going to face in, in reality. Some bioprocesses actually the, the full scale is not so big. If we, we are thinking, if we think in the in the pharma business, the the amount of tons that are treated, they are not so much, but of course it is required to, to do the scale up uh, properly. For this, you need um, the biotechnologies, you need, uh, you need chemists, you need uh, chemical engineers, but also specialists in, in many, many fields of activities. It's a huge teamwork. But to, I suppose you have stuff. those, I suppose you have those talents in your network. So you could match them perhaps to 
well, this 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 idea of Daniel is is a, just a, an example, but it, it, there's so many um, lab scale um, processes that are waiting to to go a step further and to start to scale up to hundreds and thousands of of cubic meters uh, to just to to leave the lab table and to go outside. There there are many many waiting to to be introduced in the market, but this first step is always very difficult. So networks like yours are very important to to introduce them, to help them out of their labs into the field. Could you, uh, do you know each other? Perhaps uh, this is the first uh, network uh, meeting uh, that, you, that you meet up and uh, perhaps in a year you report to us um, if this cooperation was successful. Daniel, are you open for that? Absolutely, absolutely yeah. open. Well. <laughs> So you have to you have to go you have to go to Spain very soon to to meet and uh... Mikael, I have some somehow I believe we know each other already. I don't know where and uh, well I don't there. know if from some other webinar <laughs> <laughs> might be. <laughs> but I will I will get in contact to you afterwards and then we may talk about how we can interact with your network. It would be really really interest to me yeah. to join okay that would be nice to, to see this um, interaction uh, developing uh, in a live audience with uh, 69 other people uh, looking at this uh, short and young development we'll try it um let's um let's start our discussion and then i'll ask um uh alexia's uh, nipers to to prepare uh, for a the, the introduction a bit earlier than we scheduled, so I give you some more time to to do the presentation. Um, but um, could I just talk? Ask one of my colleagues, uh, um, Irina. Um, we we talked about uh, well, we've seen the discussions, but I ask a few times. Let's not forget the the the, the people in the field, in the in the towns, in the cities. Uh, this what uh, Miguel called the stakeholder engagement. Uh, can you reflect on that? How, how this, are, are you aware in your country, in your network that uh, matching up and, and keeping the people involved and this stakeholder engagement, is that also an issue in, in, your, in your network, in your world, in your pro uh, projects, Irina? Could you reflect on that? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sorry, Franz. Uh, would you repeat your question once well, more? We, we we talked about uh, as we've seen those uh, this, the the presentations, but one of the aspects I I, I put some attention to, um, and Miguel also noticed that is what he called the, the stakeholder engagement, and that we not only focus on technologies and rules and regulations and what Brussels asks for us. But that the people in the, in the companies and in the municipalities and the, the, the just the ordinary people in the fa families would also should also follow this development. And if the technology develops too fast and we lose the contact with the ordinary people, uh, we'll get even bigger problems. And my question was this question of stakeholder engagement and, and connecting with the people is that also an issue? That that is that is addressed in your network, in your country, in your activities. Thank you. Firstly, I would like to apologize uh, for participants that I'm asking you to repeat your question. I'm I'm searching for missing expert. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but yes, I'm answering your question. I suppose that some of uh, participants today would be even better uh, repliers on your question. But yes, we do it. And we find it very significant to engage stakeholders, as you say, ordinary, ordinary people, because uh, the uh, change of attitude and uh, raising awareness is part of uh, the whole process. We are talking today about efficient and uh, useful and sustainable use of bio waste, because. Uh, as we know, the most of bio starts starts at families. There are a lot of initiatives around the country in Latvia, and uh, some uh, of uh, uh, 
uh, households, many of households already do a lot of things to sort uh, waste, but still many of us, uh, including myself, uh, uh, should do much more to, to start this, to follow more carefully. This is one part if we talk about uh, household waste. But if we talk about uh, other technologies, I would like to emphasize that also many companies, especially small and medium, uh, they are um, owners or keepers of bio waste or side products. And they still do not know what to do with all this stuff. And uh, uh, some of them already do some initiatives, like there is one company who is cooperating with university to find out what to do with uh, um, sour cabbage juice, how to utilize it, how to extract proteins and some other ingredients. And But uh, we still are at the very initial uh, step and uh, we duly hope on uh, more active cooperation of different level authorities and authorities and business companies and, and civil society organizations to initiate new uh, conversations, new activities, which would lead to better utilization of uh, bio waste. But but what 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 instruments uh, are you aware of? Uh, do, do you have, for instance, it has been mentioned already. If you give people money, for instance, um, they will react on on on, on this uh, this incentive. But you can also raise your taxes if they don't do anything and if they do the wrong things you could uh, find them so you either give money with let's say the carrot or you punish them with with a fine which is the stick do you have experience what what this is playing with carrots and sticks how this is developing in in your country uh okay thank you uh, yes, there are carrots and sticks at the same time. And as a ordinary person, I am speaking on ordinary person behalf right now. So we, we have uh, uh, in Riga, in capital of the of Latvia, we have uh, bio waste collection uh, opportunities, and and that's free of charge, and we can do it. And th such we can reduce expenses we pay for waste collection. But of course, so if we are uh, behaving badly and this waste is uh, meshed and, and together with other waste, so we are punished. We are paying more for that. This is okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a nice combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, but maybe uh, there are, I see that there are some uh, people from uh, Waste Association, maybe they have an opinion and they would give more and, and uh, other examples of what is ongoing in Latvia. Could you mention one of the, the companies who are in the audience that we could approach them directly? Uh, Ruta Bender, are you here, please? I saw Ruta was there, but uh, yeah. right now she is not here. No, may maybe she's away for a, for a short while. Yeah. So maybe uh, any other participant would like to share experience and also participants of other countries. Yeah, experience on, on activating, motivating, and perhaps pushing a little bit the audience into the right direction. What is the best? While, while colleagues are thinking uh, what to say, we also have uh, initiatives at school level where children are told about uh, what kind of waste exists, how to uh, manage it properly. And I know that there are many cases where children are those who encourage families to start waste separation. Uh, and uh, this also is a small initiative. Maybe it's not uh, nationwide and uh, it's based on uh, uh, enthusiasm mainly, but this is also something what works and, uh, and uh, is very supported uh, at schools. And uh, I know that there are also some civil society projects ongoing, uh, uh, ongoing and uh, they are also mainly, um, mainly targeted to school age uh, children, to youngsters, to create this, if I can say so, 
um, community thinking way what to do with waste and they are our future society and and this probably will work more heavily in some 5 10 15 years but this is something what we should do right now today in order to make a change in the future okay okay maybe i i will <laughs> take some words <laughs> the situation in latvia with bio waste of course is quite hard because we were not uh, organizing such uh, politics such governmental politics before and who were interested to compost they were starting to do it uh, but uh, during the previous year uh, our biggest landfill gatling were organized the first fermentation plant. It means that um, waste which were unsorted were at first sorted, uh, taken out um, ferrum and um, aluminium parts and then um, heavy glass and others. And then these light parts were going forward. And then it was going then through thermal seats and uh, small parts of organic were taken away. And those parts were used for um, composting at first, but then uh, they were um, fulfilled with the um, percolate, uh, with such fuel, uh, no, not fuel, but the liquid. And uh, this liquid were taken to um, biogas uh, reactors to produce biogas. So we are going, <laughs> but uh, only step by step. Yeah, 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 that, that's important. Uh, if you do not go step by step, uh, you lose the people. Of course, and uh, now what is interesting is that these things are, of course, are in, in, in our new uh, waste management law and in waste management plan for next seven years. And uh, we are organizing such life project, life project, indirect project for seven years. And we hope that we receive a little bit money and yep. we can uh, show some good um, ideas yep. uh, how to deal with waste, bio waste. Yeah, that's interesting. Then it's, uh, perhaps it's also good for you to, to join the, the networks like this, uh, like the one Miguel uh, presented. Eh? As we said, uh, we must learn with each other and from each other. Um, in, the, in the meantime, uh, I have the good news that Hans-Peter Erhardt uh, joined us. Hans-Peter, you uh, oh, yeah. are there. Yeah, welcome. Um, good that you're here. Uh, are, you, uh, are you able and prepared to do your uh, presentation? Oh, uh, you're, you are still muted, sorry. Yes. No, yeah. no, no, excuse me. Um, I tried to bring it to the screen and then to start my presentation. And uh, yes, let's let's try. Okay. Um, you know how it works. I, I so see. you can see the it's screen. Moving. Yes. Start your presentation. So I start the presentation. Okay. Can you see? Yes. So. Does it work? I, um, I see the presentation, but uh, you, you don't have it on the presentation screen yet. So you must start and do the first slide on. Then um, still the opening screen of, uh, of uh, PowerPoint. So I have it, yeah, on my screen it's working. You can't see it? No, it's still on the... It's still uh, on the opening screen of PowerPoint. Yeah, but um, so I'm not sure how to manage it now. Can you go to uh, Bildschirm Präsentation? Just a second. What? Bildschirm Präsentation. Vielleicht. I, I try it again. Can you see now the, the presentation? No. Not. Yeah, then um, I have to work perhaps in this mode. Can you see now this uh, presentation? It's still, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not 
ideal, but uh, we, we can see it. So, um, yeah, I, it, it doesn't work. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I yeah. have a, another meeting uh, an hour before and it was uh, similar. So, um, yeah, we'll let, this us try, let us try in this mode and yeah. uh, then it's, it's better yeah. than, yeah. Try. Okay. I uh, my issue uh, headline for today is uh, biogas uh, production and composting of bio waste from households, and um, uh, in my section in in the Eggersman group, I can start see, uh, show you the next uh, screen. Bacon is um, a part of the Eggersman group. I um, Hans Peter Erd, I'm my name. Uh, I am a sales manager and project developer. Um, of uh, Eggersmann, uh, of Bacon, and a Bacon is part of the Eggersmann group within 20 different uh, um, uh, companies. And uh, this uh, Eggersmann group is founded in 1958. It's uh, more than uh, 50, nearly 60 years old. It's a, a middle-sized company in, in Germany. We have uh, around 750 to 800 employees and a turnover of about uh, 200 up to 250 million euros, actually. And uh, we, as Engelsmann Group, we are uh, active in uh, mechanical treatment of uh, waste in general, means uh, paper, glass, uh, plastics and so on, really big uh, sorting uh, facilities than in the biological treatment. This is my issue for today. And in also com more complex uh, mechanical and biological treatment plants. Uh, so for really big amount of household waste. Um, My issue for today is the uh, treatment of uh, biological fraction of household waste. So typical input materials are uh, the, the organic fraction of uh, municipal solid waste. Household waste means uh, pre-sorted um, screened material, um, mostly 10 to 80 or 100 millimeters or a separate collected fraction, which is separate collected direct, directly at the households, um, from which you can produce high quality of compost or and green waste and agricultural solid waste, which is mostly mixed to the digestate or, or could be also used directly in, the, in, a, in a biogas plant. Here a typical uh, scheme of uh, anaerobic digestion plant. So here you can see the, the concrete made chamber. There are uh, some uh, steel plates for drainage at the side, aeration uh, lines in the middle, uh, uh, gas tight door and the technique is uh, behind the fermenters or on top of it and a little bit uh, tubes for uh, leading the, the biogas at the end. Collection of um, percolate means the liquid which is coming out from the material. Here it is stored and then pumped back to the solid material. The solid material is, um, um, is uh, driven in or brought in with a wheel loader. So material transport is done by a wheel loader, very robust system and loaded and unloaded by a wheel loader here into the tunnels. After closing the doors, um, uh, it, the system is switching to anaerobic mode and is percolated with uh, warm percolate. And then the biogas production starts. And after typically 20 to 30 days, the material is um, brought out by a reloader and fresh material is brought in. So this is more or less the system. Here a view, a photo view into a digester. Here you can see the steel drainage plates and the aeration lines, and also a view in, a, in the, in the, the back side of the, of the fermenters where the technique is installed. 
here, this uh, technical uh, walkway. Uh, this technical walkway is prefabricated in our facilities in, in Germany, in Bad Oeynhausen. So for the whole of the plant, it's prefabricated and tested. And then it's uh, 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 put into parts again and loaded into containers and brought to the site. So that there it is uh, installed very quickly and then it's um, fixed together and, uh, and everything is installed and working. So most of the parts, not everything, but uh, 90% could be prefabricated. Also the technic on top of the roofs, it's uh, installed in containers, the electrical cabinet, uh, uh, the, the air compressed air pressure system, heating system and so on. It's, it's prefabricated and uh, brought to the side and installed to the fermenters on top of the fermenters. And then uh, the installation time is uh, very short for that, for these things. Here a view, a typical view uh, inside a fermenter, a photo view with a loaded biologic material. You see it's solid material. You can stack it to two and a half to three meters with a wheel loader. And um, in the first stages, it has to be aerated. So it's, it needs to be so structural that uh, air can go through in the beginning. And this is also necessary so that the liquid which is spread on goes through the material and then it's drained and, and brought in a circle. Um, here, a photo of a typical um, uh, control system screen view. You can see a lot of technical measurements, devices, and so on. So uh, it's a complex system and you have uh, every time also from uh, via internet uh, a view on the technical issues of this uh, plant. Um, so uh, in general, the, the, the um, biogas AD technique we have is designed for uh, mixed organic waste streams, best uh, material sizes are between 10, 15 millimeters to 100 millimeters. And uh, best is uh, when it is a uh, uh, waste from household where glass, metals and stones and plastics mostly are in it. Uh, with this uh, mixed uh, solid materials, our technique has no problems. Typically inputs are uh, organic fraction of MSW, separate collected household waste, uh, uh, bio waste from households and green and garden waste. Oh, excuse me. Uh, specific beer biogas outputs are around 80 to 120 cubic meters biogas per ton. And this technique is not very useful for sludge materials. So this is the only uh, exception of our um, wet and sludgy materials are not uh, suitable in our uh, technique. Um, the biogas we uh, produce um, could be used uh, to pr produce electricity and uh, could be upgraded to natural uh, gas quality. Um, in, in the uh, last one, two years, it's more if you have electricity production than uh, uh, peak electricity production with big gas holders or more in, 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 in the last month or years, it's upgrading systems. And uh, for these uh, techniques, we have also a 10 year experience so we can deliver both techniques if necessary. After the, um, the digestion, the material has to be um, mixed in a, in a mixing device, uh, which is also in our program. Um, this digestate is a wet, not very aeratable material at the end. So you have to mix it with a, a more uh, structural material. And with this machine, you can mix it very homogeneous and easy. 
And after this uh, mixing, mixing the, 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 the organic material could be stabilized in some weeks in such an aerobic tunnel. It's only with uh, aerobic uh, injection lines from the bottom and uh, yeah, the, the, the air could be led also in circles to uh, accelerate very fast temperature and there are stabilization programs uh, so that these materials could be stabilized very quickly and uh, uh, you can measure everything and uh, document everything so hygienization and stabilization is very easy to make uh, in these tunnels. And uh, for all tunnels, anaerobic and aerobic, we have also an automatic filling system. So this uh, conveyor system can slide into the tunnels and unload material so that the uh, wheel loader traffic could be reduced, mostly used in bigger plants. And uh, yeah, to, to make it a little bit easier to transport the materials. So I have uh, two examples for you. One is uh, a plant uh, we uh, have installed more than 10 years ago in uh, Schleswig-Holstein in Rendsburg. This plant is uh, um, extended two times, would be, will be, was extended two times. The last, last extension was 2016 and now there is a throughput of about uh, 64,000 tons through the AD and the overall throughput is uh, nearly 100,000 tons and a very good example for a good working uh, anaerobic and aerobic uh, biological treatment facility. And uh, yeah, this is one of our eldest uh, reference plants. And a newer one is uh, now actually in the construction phase. It's uh, planned in, uh, uh, in Bumlitz, in, uh, in the Heidekreis, Niedersachsen. It's a little bit a smaller one and um, a little bit cheaper. It has a throughput of uh, 25,000 uh, tons per year. And uh, it is designed to produce flexible electricity with a very big gas holder. And um, the, the start is planned in uh, beginning of 2000, uh, 2022. So next year it will be uh, in operation. It's uh, planned with a smaller uh, reception bunker hall, and then five anaerobic tunnels and three aerobic tunnels. And after that, it's handed over, the material is handed over to an agricultural a uh, company which uh, make the final composting and upgrading to compost and using the compost on the fields. So in summary, <clears throat> the drive orientation technology with the tunnel system is a very robust and proven technology. We have actually more than 50 biogas plants in operation and an experience of more than 15 years with, with uh, anaerobic digestion and 10 years more for composting. Uh, the bacon dry fermentation technology is a, is a batch system. And uh, we need, we don't need a very special pretreatment, except uh, sieving of household waste or bag opening. And we have no steering devices uh, in the material. So maintenance and um, operation energy cost is very low during AD operation and it's a very robust system and it's a very few activity necessary at a weekend or during night. When the fermenter is closed, then it's a very stable operation. And uh, it is possible to stabilize the digestate easily after anaerobic uh, stage in a composting process. Uh, and we need don't need a mechanical dewatering uh, system, so no sludges and no additional um, uh, liquid streams except uh, uh, percolate. Uh, so 
in, in compared to wet or semi-wet systems, plug flow systems, it's a very low amount of liquid and sludge materials output. The bacon process, um, uh, we have no sludgy and, and liquid uh, outputs and the operation cost and making the maintenance costs are very low compared to other techniques. So this is uh, more or less my, my presentation now. Do you have some questions to, to my uh, presentation now? Yeah, perhaps we'll see um, if anybody is reacting in the chat. Uh, I just have a few questions myself. Uh, so you 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 put it in the in the tunnel, and you we saw it in the picture, but you also mentioned it uh, some plastic or, or or stone or non fermentable materials is not a very big problem in a in a tunnel fermenter. But so you will do the separation afterwards in the preparation yeah. in the in the aerobic phase, or wh when is the separation phase? Yeah. So mostly uh, you have a, a low amount of disturbing materials, uh, means some in, in separate collected uh, bio waste, it's perhaps 3%, 2%, 3%, in MSW materials, 5 7%. And it's easier to uh, separate these uh, waste materials after composting, then uh, the material is hygienicized and it's uh, dry or more dry. Our target is um, more than 60% of dry matter content, 62, 65% dry matter content. So low amount of water and then the waste material materials separate easy from the organic material and you can sieve it away or we have also a more sophisticated upgrading uh, systems, um, uh, special compost cleaning system, but this needs a dry material. So uh, the input material to separate uh, uh, most of the waste matter for in, from the input is very difficult because it glues together, it's wet. So it's more easy to have it afterwards. Yep. And uh, we don't shred and uh, move the material too hard. So the pieces are big and uh, it's easy to uh, sieve it out. Yeah, yeah. So and then... And then, then after the aerobic phase, so the the, the comp composting, this is used in in agriculture as a as a soil improver or what? What is the? the yeah, you have two types. Uh, honestly, you have to say if you have a separate collected input means a two bin system in the at the household, then it's a standard to produce a high quality compost means that that needs these two bin system if you have a uh, separation from household a fraction from organic uh, from a house household waste in a one bin system um, experience i would say 20 years ago says that the quality is not very high so you can't use it uh, easy in, a, in an agricultural system it's, it's then a stabilization for dumping before dumping but could be that, uh, but but this needs uh, more uh, investigation. I would say could be that the uh, toxic inputs in household in, in mixed household is low enough that you can also can use this MSW fraction uh, in agriculture. But in Germany and most of Western Europe, nobody used this. It's, it's stabilized then for before dumping. But in a separate collection, then you have a really good quality. And this is proven more than 20 years, 25 years in Germany. And uh, also in other countries, Austria and uh, Belgium and yeah, yeah. Denmark and other. Yeah. So I see in the chat there is a question on this. Um, I, I think that's of Varam El Lagzina Erika Varam. So I, I think that with this answer, this question uh, was answered. Um, if it is good material, it can be used in agriculture. If not, it, it must be dumped. Is there, is, would it be dry enough and valuable enough to burn it? Um, it? No, no. Um, no, no not, not this material. This material is, um, if it is 
has a lot of wooden material inside, then it's not very worth to make anaerobic digestion. Then you can directly compost it, or there are also programs in our composting system to dry it very fast, so not to stabilize uh, long term, but very fast drying. This is also possible in the composting stage yeah, or in, the, in such a tunnel. And then if you have a lot of wood inside, then you can burn it. But the, uh, the, the, the AD valuable uh, material with, which have more uh, kitchen waste inside and so on, and not so much uh, wood, then the, uh, the, the, the energy value is relatively low. You have a lot of minerals inside, it's stabilized. <laughs> Uh, so I think it's not worth to burn it because you have then problems with glass and the ashes and so on. So um, you can, with, with a separate collected bio waste with a lot of kitchen, you, know, you make AD and composting and a good compost. And if you have more wooden material, you can, if you want, dry it in a composting stage or in a special composting stage and then burn it. But composting and burning it's not very sensible in my view. Because in the other presentations, uh, unfortunately, uh, you, you missed that. Uh, but um, then there the, were some presentations on, on what can we do on a high, uh, high end use of uh, bio waste. But is it feasible that the output of your fermenters could be used as a raw material for further processing? I mean, most of your nutrients would still be in there. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the material is, um, um, you mean from, uh, from the household waste or organic fraction from M MSW? Um, after, after your fermentation, I mean. After the fermentation. We have, honestly, in our uh, company, we have two strategy, strategies. Either you use AD means anaerobic uh, because you make it wet and it's more the, uh, the, the really kitchen organics uh, inside, uh, AD and then stabilization and dumping, or you, you use the whole material, uh, uh, whole bunch and dry it, and then you separate the plastics and also dried organics. So this is not in my presentation now, but we have, it's, it's called Eggersmann Fuel. Yeah, it's another concept. And then you would directly fast dry the whole household waste and separate then plastics and also dried organic, some wooden sticks, leaves, and so on. And, and then separate when it is dried down to 20 or 15% of uh, moisture. Then you separate this, this burnable of combustible materials and minerals. So these are two different strategies. Either you use the... Uh, biogas, but this is only a part of the material, this, this um, uh, sieved uh, 1080 material, or you use the whole uh, bunch of material and dry everything very fast and separate them for combustion. So this is our view on treating MSW material, it depends on site conditions, on political uh, decisions and so on. So. Because for, for burning, you need special uh, combustion uh, incineration plants, which are more uh, energy valuable than uh, household waste incineration plants, uh, but also waste incineration plants, more or less. So needs a little bit special approval phases and so on. So um, yeah, we have two strategies in our company. One is AD composting stabilization, and the other hand is drying and RDF production, I would say. Yeah. And the, the, the big uh, advantage of your system is that it's very scalable. Huh? You, you had a small plant uh, in Heidekreis, which is 25,000 ton, and the bigger one in in the north of 64,000 ton, which is in waste management still not, not very big, of course. Um, so it's, it's very scalable, but um, how, how, how big could you go? If you go to a big city like Hanover or whatever, where yeah, you go? Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, in our view, 
uh, the range between 25,000 and 100,000 is uh, very good operatable in uh, with the AD and with uh, drying and uh, RDF production, we have facilities with 250, 300,000 uh, realized in the last two years. So I think uh, if, you, if you see 200,000 uh, uh, input stream, uh, then you have 100,000 uh, material stream sieved for the AD means uh, more than 200,000, 250,000, we have actually not realized. So we have two, uh, we think we can uh, uh, operate most of the cities, I would say, or most of the uh, uh, material streams. And uh, it's no problem to have 100,000 AD plant. Uh, actually, our biggest one is uh, in uh, California, yeah, with 80,000 uh, and 16 fermenters. And uh, I think uh, 20,000 more is no problem. So uh, up to a, 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 a overall stream of 200 and 250,000 uh, tons of household waste, it's no problem. Yeah, yeah. either um, a complete uh, uh, handling for RDF production or a sieving of organic fraction and having 100,000 in them. Uh, AD plant and another 100,000 assorting plant. So uh, for our group, no problem for these uh, sizes. Do you have any, any commercial contacts in the Baltic states already? Contacts means uh, sites realized. Wow, oh, customers or leads. Yeah, or our, our latest customer is in, Lat in Latvia. We uh, actually realize, uh, uh, which is uh, um, tendered in uh, last year, so uh, uh, the, 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 it's a small town diver uh, waste treatment uh, facility. Um, other um, no organic treatment plants actually in the Baltic states, but machine delivery, it's not in my section. Yeah? We, we also sell uh, treatment machines or smaller treatment me mechanical treatment facilities. There we have contacts, but these are colleagues of me. So, uh, Organic treatment plants, uh, the first one in, in Poland, of course, we have four or five. And in uh, Latvia, we realize now one. I suppose you're open for uh, for contacts when people of, of the... Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a network event, so we must uh, yeah. try to connect with each other. Yeah, please, con please connect me uh, on bacon.eu and then we can discuss and develop projects and so on. Okay, yeah. okay thanks very much for this uh, okay. interesting presentation. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it needs to be stressed again that this is all... Uh, mature and market uh, ready. Uh, this is not an experimental technology. It's proven technology. It's been on the market for a long time, also in my country. It's good to see that it's developing uh, so rapidly, uh, making use of it. Thanks very much again. Um, please stay with us for the next uh, presentation. And uh, we'll, uh, can you, uh, your sign is closed. Let's uh, ask the next introduction on the stage, Alexei Nipers of Nipes from Latvia. Are you there, uh, Alexis? Yes. Hello, everybody. Yes. Good day. Welcome. Uh, we had to improvise a little bit, but I saw you were there and uh, standing by. Thank you for that. Um, no problem. Can you uh, put your presentation on the screen? Yeah, it's working perfectly. Thank you very much. I would say, uh, please uh, go ahead. Okay, mm, my presentation will be not so so technical um, and um, more like um, from social sciences. And uh, I'm trying to adjust the size to see on my desktop. So, okay, no, it's okay. And that is um, based on the output from our project, uh, which is uh, bought by Mass for Value, which we conducted for with, with other partners. And this presentation is mainly prepare, prepared by Arnis Leinertz. And um, I'm 
uh, also part of, of this team. So this presentation is about uh, good practices um, in implementation of for circular bioeconomy uh, and um, why it, it, could be, it could be essential for companies. So why it is, I guess it is uh, many, many reasons for that, but uh, there are five main reasons. And that is uh, circle by economy is, uh, means new business opportunities and uh, business niches, um, new products, new processes. Uh, that's first thing. Another one is cost reduction. Uh, that's always uh, valuable to, to evaluate mm, circularity and byproducts uh, for cost reduction. That means more competitive products uh, for your company. Another thing is uh, adaptation to new rules and regulations. As we know, there are a lot of quite big challenges, political challenges, um, mainly because of uh, climate policies, but not only. And that means that the rules and regulations are changing and uh, becoming becoming more and, 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 and taking into account more and more uh, these political ambitions. Uh, another thing why it could be important and interesting for companies because uh, there are many different uh, support opportunities. Uh, you can participate in projects, uh, get some finance, fi finances um, from public funds also. So that is the way you can, you can develop new products using support opportunities. And uh, that's also about... Uh, social and envir environmental responsibility of the companies because company is not just produ producing some products that uh, a lot of consum consumers care uh, how uh, those products are produced, how environmental and social uh, challenges are taken into account and uh, why we are pay, paying for this or that product and different kind of, uh, of, of labeling. We see that there is shift in, in, in demand for more sustainable products. Um, so that's five main reasons, but not, not only you can, you can imagine there are also others, but I guess it's five main. Many of you have heard definitely about European Green Deal and uh, and um, there are nine policy areas which are closely related to circular bioeconomy and um, <clears throat> challenges related to that that's the biodiversity farm to fork um, um, sustainable agriculture clean energy um, sustainable industry to to ensure more sustainable production and environmental production uh, there are also for building, special building and re renovation, which is uh, um, actually many of us think that is not very much related to bioeconomy, but actually that's quite a big topic. Um, and uh, also definitely elimin elimination of pollution and climate, climate action. There are five objectives in circular bioeconomy, which is another, another political ambition, which because many political ambitions are like a separate, but are very much interlinked. So um, circular bioeconomy development at the Euro European Union level are very much focused on uh, food security, on sustainable use of natural resources, um, replacing uh, uh, of non-renewable non resources, um, mitigation and also adaptation to climate change and definitely jobs and competitiveness. So there are um, a lot of different political ambitions and funds which are related to that. Um, 
If you are looking at circular bioeconomy, on the one hand, it is quite a complex uh, topic um, because that is a lot of different processes. Earlier today, you saw that this process chemistry behind that, it's a lot of uh, new topics. And because very much um, chemical industry was focused on fossil resources and quite a lot of things to discover also in bioeconomy. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, that's quite a simple system. That means that we are using something which can be grown, uh, which is uh, biomass based and to use it in a circular way, just um, to, to take as much as possible from that in a more sustainable way. So that's uh, very often this kind of picture is used. Maybe you have seen what the circular bioeconomy and aspect of bioeconomy are. Uh, we, our, our colleagues uh, within this project also looked at some specific areas. And here, for example, this uh, graph of heat production. And we see that despite we are living in geographically in, in one region, Baltic Sea region, but we are um, using very different ways of generating heat uh, um, in different countries. And that's also related to geography, but also related to tra traditions, related to history of policy making. So we see that there is there are quite a big differences um, and uh, also a lot of opportunities to include some kind of different way, different biomass in, um, in this production and also to replay fossil fuels um, uh, to make this heat production more, uh, more sustainable and more uh, climate neutral. And our colleagues also calculated how much different ways of uh, residues um, can be used in different countries. And that's very much related to area of the countries also, but it also shows that it's a huge opportunity to use biomass uh, in and bioresources in, in the economy, which are currently not very much used. Um, we looked at uh, uh, specifically also in this within this uh, exercise and support measures because uh, that's very often companies are interested uh, in in support different support measures because if there are political ambitions then there should be some some resources behind that and uh, and policymakers are using this kind of different support resources that's not only financial uh, re resources but a direct uh, but also indirect resources so uh, we concluded there that we can divide in four kind of uh, support measures and that one is fiscal uh, different uh, but that's not only always positive that also with with negative effect uh, like to to make sustainable production more competitive, you sometimes uh, making just non-sustainable production less competitive with different kind of taxes, CO2, fossil carbon tax, uh, um, but also with positive like tax intensive incentives, uh, different uh, market introduction programs and uh, subsidies. Um, but also trying to remove uh, indirect subsidy to, to fuel uh, industry, which is a separate topic. As we know very much, this fossil, fossil industry is um, uh, have um, positive, have indirect support measures. Uh, another issue is regulatory. So support measures, uh, we have also different kind of 
quota mandates, bans, uh, green public procurement is a separate topic in that. So this kind of regulatory measures when policymakers cry trying to to limit um, or on the one hand and stimulate on the other hand um, production with some specific uh, specific in instruments which are not fiscal instruments. Um, another one is social social um, measures uh, uh, like different kind of introduction, different kind of certificates or labels. Uh, when consumer can see what he or she is buying, uh, because for he can he or she can trust on this label, label or certificate and understand that this product uh, really is. Uh, produced in more sustainable way in comparison to, to other products. And uh, there are also sustainability policy measures with, um, with different uh, type of objectives uh, or targets, uh, which are also um, so, so at, at the national level, but also cascaded to lower level and also to um, company levels when you cannot produce too much in the old fashioned way because you just have this sustainability um, target and, and limitation. Uh, so that's kind of support measures and uh, companies, uh, in our opinion, should look at, at this broader picture because very often not, uh, they can see all the picture because uh, they are not focusing on that, but uh, that will help to, to look a little bit different in what, what they're doing. We tried to do the, the exercise at the national level. And we, for, for instance, here is for Estonia, but uh, that's for all the project um, countries, when there is a list of support, different support measures. And we're trying to, to look at what kind of four type of support measures are under four type of um, uh, sectors. So by an energy industry, there are fiscal support measures, regulatory, uh, societal and uh, sustainability. So we look at what document or support measure uh, and here we're putting this number of that. So we, you can look at what kind of document you can find uh, what kind of support measures are there. And so that is for, for all countries, uh, which we prepared together with, with, our, with our partners. And here is a summary uh, for how many we have um, identified, how many measures are in four, four, uh, four sectors, four analyzed sectors with four type of measures. So that can be checked that uh, we are not pretending that it is, uh, we are covering everything possible, but uh, um, I guess the most, the most important ones. Within the project, we also, uh, with our partners, uh, analyzed different uh, business models and practice examples. And um, specifically, there are in deep analysis of 12 practice within BB4, 4, 4B project, Baltic Biomass for Value project. And that's related to heat production, uh, fuel electricity from biogas, district heating, um, um, biochemicals, circular bioeconomy in agriculture production, fertilizer use and soil quality in products from waste, plant-based biomass uh, and uh, etc. So all the business models uh, will be publicly available and everybody will be able to check and look how we did that and maybe to, to discover some new ideas and business cases are analyzed in, the, uh, in all project countries. That means Norway, Sweden, Germany, Poland, and three Baltic countries. And the way we try to look at is this kind of matrix. 
it seems a little bit complicated, but the idea is very simple. We have land, and from land we produce some kind of uh, product, and then we are trying to cascade what we are getting uh, from this biomass and what kind of side streams or waste are we are getting from that. So that's like kind of cascading down and from each step from cascading, we are getting some product. So that's theoretical picture. And here is some specific example for some company, which is like um, primary production is grain and rapeseed. And this um, is used as a feedstock for milk and meat production. And when you're producing feed, uh, milk and, uh, and, um, and meat, you're getting manure and residues, and that is used uh, as a fertilizer and also used for biogas production. From biogas, we're getting uh, electricity, and also as a side stream, there is a heat, and heat is used for warming uh, water, uh, which is used for fish production. So this, this type of cascading, we are, we are going step by step and trying to get as much as possible for, for the first bioresource, which is grain and rapeseed. And after that, we're getting deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper and getting more and more products. So um, we are using, we are wasting less, uh, less and less resources. So here is some kind of summary we prepared for, for each business case. We will not go into detail in this case, but here we are showing for, for this company, which kind of fiscal, regulatory, social uh, and sustainability support measures are used to achieve this kind of business, uh, business model. And uh, also what we see is that um, each company, it is help of, uh, helpful for any company to look at what are the results of process implementations and uh, to help to discover what, we, what this company uh, is producing, not only some products, but also some benefits, which is environmental, social and economic benefits. And, uh, and trying to position itself not just as a product developer or um, product producer, but also producer of social economic benefits, which, uh, which is not less important um, for, for the company. So that's the way we analyze it. We see that there are five main ways um, to, to look at different opportunities. And first one is for company. If, if company is, is deciding to, to go um, to, to use more, um, to, to work in more circular way, to use more bioresources in circular way, uh, there are five um, ways to go. First one, just to, to get some connections. Uh, interinstitutional cooperation, the interdisciplinary connection, just to, to find different kind of ideas, to test ideas, to connect with other, uh, with other companies, to discover what is output from one company, which is not used, but can be useful input for another company for another product. So interconnection, um, which we are calling um, interdisciplinary and interinstitutional cooperation. And um, another one is to look at different funding schemes and uh, different uh, support, support measures. Uh, the third one is knowledge transfer, look for different con consultants uh, to, to look at the research and dev development service producers uh, because a lot of things are already discovered and uh, um, but many companies don't know about that. And, and we have, uh, here is also examples. Uh, next thing is 
knowledge, cross-border knowledge and technology transfer uh, related to foreign direct investment. So foreign direct investment is uh, helping company not only with finances, but also for new ideas. That's the way company can grow. Uh, in, and, and the last one is just to look at possibility of using different labeling certifications and uh, com campaigns to promote uh, their products as green, sustainable, uh, and um, circular products. So for each, we have also different examples uh, and case studies. We can look how companies did that. And that's also will be publicly available as a result of our project. So that's briefly from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nicely in time. Thanks very much. Could you uh, close your presentation so we go back on the screen? Yeah, thanks very much. Great. That's very analytical. Uh, and it also um, gives a good overview how complicated it is for a society to make the steps forward. It's an interaction with so many things, but it's, it's very valuable to approach it this way. Your, your, your main uh, audience, your main target group is, is companies in your project, isn't it? Um, but would I would say that, for instance, if, if you talk about your implementation management, hey, you you uh, you identified four four measures. Uh, but it's interesting, perhaps, also to look at who takes those measures. For instance, if you talk about taxation, it could be taxation from the national government. It can also from uh, the local uh, municipal uh, government. Do you have any views on the? The, um, the the interaction between the the, the governmental um, uh, forces uh, who who should take the lead would it be the national government or more the local government for instance taxes uh, regulations incentives who is in the lead in this yeah thank you we also discussed a lot about about that and our conclusion is that um, we have uh, quite a different countries around the Baltic Sea, and some countries are much bigger than, than other countries. So we cannot uh, say that there is a federal system in, in Germany is, uh, uh, and there is an, uh, three levels, three or four levels in, in Germany, and there is there are four three levels in Lithuania and a couple of levels in in other countries. So so there are different levels of uh, of, of governance. So and um, the, this governance structure and system also is quite different. Delegation of what at what level who is doing what is also different. So that is a very country specific, and. Um, and we see that in Germany, it is not at the federal level, many things at as a land level and, um, and municipal level. And in smaller countries, uh, many things are done at national level. So yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no, no one, one, one answer to for all countries. It's, it's, yeah, it's framework. But you would, you, you would agree, I suppose, that, that the local governments uh, play a very important role in this uh, this, this move towards uh, a, a circular uh, economy. They, they, they are very, mm. very important, I would say. Uh, this, um, you also uh, gave an overview of, uh, of, of, of new programs, ambitions, you call it, in the EU. Would, would you have also um, uh, material or, or information about the individual funding schemes connected to the different EU uh, ambitions. I know there's a lot of money uh, waiting to be spent in, in, in Brussels at this moment, all connected to, to the new uh, projects and programs. But do you also collect information on this, on the funding opportunities? We, we analyze, but not we not focused very much because actually there are a lot of information already available 
and there is no need to, to reproduce the same thing. So that's uh, European Union is doing quite a good job to informing about different opportunities. So there are a lot of consultants and many, many governmental institutions can help with that. So that's a lot of information. Uh, and um, and with, with the internet, with, that's, everything can be found quite, quite easily. Yeah. yeah. There's so much yeah, that, that it's everything can be found, but that's quite a skill to to find your way through this jungle of internet.